Uka. Uka. Inga tuwa mena kamba nzanga pa sivina kugwile kumtima uziwe kutia note Zambia. Jilandijisa, jilandijisa, ijisi, ijisi tata, ijisi, haga inde kutigati kujisi jisi, uwewe utolimu na zambi. Kambu subotoba na Zambia Jatu jisa jisi Anzanga mwakamba vambili about Ziko la Zambia But I want to tell you Apostle There is nothing that is written in the Holy Bible Which shall not come to pass It is written in the Bible That when righteous people rule people celebrate. Yes. Now I want to ask you Zambians, how many of you are, are celebrating? No. It is also written in the Bible that when bad people rule, people go into hiding. Amen. As we speak today, how many Zambians are free to speak their minds? It is only gallant men and women who are ready to sacrifice their lives for this country. The vast majority have turned into senseless praise singers. Why? Because we're fulfilling the word of God. When bad people rule, people go into hiding. When bad people rule, even those who are smart, even those who are clever, even those who are knowledgeable, pretend not to be. Because they are afraid of the bad rulers. The good thing, the good thing is that it is darkest before dawn. My colleagues, you spoke about the sale of maize. Yes, they sold our maize. Beyond selling the maize, the question you must ask is who pocketed the money? I want to tell Zambians that at the time that I was privileged to serve as Minister of Agriculture, we did sell maize. We did. And the reason we sold maize, President Sakwiba, was because we had to replenish the stocks in the food reserves, strategic reserves. Beyond that, fellow citizens, when the Patriotic Front sold maize, we made sure that the ones who are selling the maize were going to pay 20% excise duty to Zambian Treasury. We did that because that strategic reserve, even if it is owned by an individual farmer, it is a national resource. And every Zambian must benefit when it's exported. That was the reason we introduced 20% excise duty. When bad people came, what did they do? They decided you can export the maize without even paying excise duty. Why was that? Why was that? In whose pockets did the 20% go? Because the truth of the matter is that they did not reduce the price at which they are selling maize in Congo the price actually increased. Now, if the 20% was not paid to treasury, then who pocketed it? <laughs> My colleagues, you spoke about the maize that was in reserve. I want to remind you that under the patriotic front, which Haga Inde wants to demonize every day, we had the largest bumper harvest ever in history of Zambia. In the year 2020-2021 harvest, we recorded 3.6 million metric tons of maize. When righteous people rule, 
people celebrate. Yes. What happened in the year 2022-2023? In the year 2022-2023, which was their first year, the 2021-2022 was not theirs. Because the PF had already distributed inputs. So the harvest of 2022 is not UPND's harvest. Their first harvest was the harvest in 2023. What was it? Again, fulfilling the word, when good people govern, people celebrate. God in heaven was reminding you that the 2.8 million Zambians who are purported to have voted in August 2021 were actually duped. It is now time for you to realize, Zambians, that not everything that glitters is gold. And self-righteous people are dangerous people. When you demonize others and call them devils and you call yourself an angel, the Zambians have now realized better the devil you know than the angel who lies. In their first harvest, they dropped our bumper harvest from 3.6 million tons to 2.7. 900,000 metric tons gone. And this year, 2024, God again is reminding us that he wants his word to be fulfilled. If we are going to record 1.5 million metric tons of maize, then something has gone wrong somewhere. Let's ask Hagainde. When Parliament in Zambia decided that we're not going to get involved in feeding our people on GMO, why, what was the reason? The reason was because we wanted to protect the health of our people. Now look at this man. On one hand, he says, I'm going to export maize to Tanzania, to Kenya, and to Congo. On the other hand, he tells them, that I'm bringing GMO from South Africa and this GMO is not for Zambian consumption, it's for export. Why do you think Kenya said, no way? President Sakwiba, the maize that they have brought back is actually our own maize which was stuck in Tunduma. Because the Kenyans said, we will not buy that maize because you have told us that you are feeding your people on good maize but you want to export to us GMO. What kind of businessman are you? <laughs> you even disclose to your people, I'm giving you wrong things. Yeah. What kind of neighbor are you going to be? If you say, when my, children's neighbor, my neighbor's children come to my house, I give them rotten food. But I give my own children better food. Being sovereign states, you are not islands. You coexist with neighbors. And the moment you show that you have no respect for your neighbors, they also have no trust in you. And even when you go to meetings, they look at you with scorn. Uka, you the ones who are supposed to save Zambia. If you think that it's Edgar Chagwalungu, it's Chishalakateka, or any of these people here, then you're missing the point. All that they are doing is to volunteer and say, we are ready. Haga Inde, come, pick us up. Yes. After all, how many of these people have not been picked up yet? Yeah. We are waiting for him. He doesn't want us to have rallies. But my message to him is, even Jesus Christ's gospels were stopped by the Jews. Yes. And yet, because the truth prevails over lies today, yeah. The word of God, the word of Jesus Christ, is scattered all over the world. Amen. We have heard from our leaders that we're going to continue to have rallies. Be they virtual, be they physical. But one message I have for you, Zambians, is have rallies wherever you are. Yes. One on one rallies, speak. Yes. Go and have rallies with your children. Have rallies on your mobile phones. 
And I'd like to tell Grafel Musamba, come, deploy all your police. Because all of us are having rallies without informing you. The muscle ceremonies told you that President Edgar Chagwalungu should have been here. He really wanted to be here. And, you know, being a Chola boy is a very big challenge. Just one hour, one hour before this meeting, I got a phone call. Sorry, I have an emergency. Zaelo, go. <laughs> he himself would have wanted to be here because he considers this a very important meeting. Yes. And he sends to all of you, his fellow council of presidents, and sends to all Zambians who are watching us, Goodwill. You. Friends, we're hearing about mines being sold and so on and so forth. Niulule? Niulule? Those who were involved in writing the 2021-2026 manifesto of the Patriotic Front made a very big blunder. And I happen to have been the chairman of that committee. And today I admit we made a big blunder. We disclosed that time had come for Zambia to lead Africa in owning its mineral resources. Yeah. When we made that known to Haga India and his friends, that's how they were funded to the extent that they were funded to kick us out. We are true patriots. The people you see gathered here want to work for Mother Zambia. Of what use is it for you to have minerals and yet those minerals are being mined by Zambians and yet the money is being externalized? Of what use is it? This reminds me of the young miners who were trapped in Kasenseri. What has the government told us? To date, the government has not told us anything about the demise of those Zambian children. Only a few days ago, a young 18-year boy, Kennedy Zulu, was shot by the police. On the 11th of November 2023, another 15-year-old boy was shot by ZNS. Not because they are thugs. No. They were shot at, killed by the state when they were queuing up for their step of food. The blood of those innocent Zambians is crying up to the Lord. It is also written in the Bible that after bad people rule, they normally fall. They always fall. And the righteous take over. My dear brothers and sisters, countrymen and women, those of you who are following us, our message is simple. Our message is clear. Lies are weak. And they are very short lives. When we said just the first week that Haga Inde was sworn in, we said this man is BMW, Bali Muntuwabufi. We meant it. Now, lying is a sin. Lying is a sin. However, however, it's a bigger sin to believe your own lie. If you even lie to yourself and you believe your own lie, then you should know that there's something wrong with you and you're going to be punished. Because God has given you all the faculties to understand, to decipher between truth and, and, and lies. But if you yourself, you convince yourself with your own lies and you think that you escape the wrath of God, 
And you don't have to wait to die to face the wrath of God. You face it here on earth. The one thing for sure is that Zambians are keeping record of what is happening. Zambians are keeping record. And the time for payback shall come. How can a person possibly even take ZNBC cameras, public television cameras, and go and parade himself and say, look at all the maize that we have. <laughs> and yet that maize is not even enough to feed one district in southern province. My colleagues spoke about how the Minister of Finance said, no, 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 I don't know enough about this. Ask Minister of Justice. Even the Vice President herself, what did she say? Thank you, Madam Speaker, for that question. But I will reserve my answer. I will wait for government to come and explain and give you more details what you understand. What details have been given so far? What about when the Minister of Mines himself was asked, what did he say? We have not sold. We have not transferred. We have not liquidated. What have you done? Ah, go and ask Minister of Justice. Go and ask Attorney General. If the Minister of Finance does not know, the Minister of Mines does not know, the Minister of Information does not know, the Vice President doesn't know, then who knows? It goes to show that the only one who knows is Bali Muntuabufi. And even to punish our member of parliament for saying it is because of what President Kalaba said. All these institutions of governance are terribly compromised. They are weaponized indeed. Because now I'm also ready. Come. Speaker of National Assembly, Neri Muti. You summoned me before and even punished me in my absence. <laughs> Summon me again. I'm reiterating what Chisenga said. Bali Muntuabu Fi. He even lies to himself. Ulari Beja. Hagainde. Abuka kuseni wamba uti ya sunuida wangula. Wenda umbrella mumota. Wali veja mtu. Eh? I've told colleagues that those who know Haga Inde, like some of us do, if he was to tell you that Musa utazwa hanza hawa, ulinkalam, then we hibe uti <laughs> Run outside. That's what he is. That is what he is. Time is very limited for this meeting because of those interruptions. But there's one message that I cannot go without mentioning, and this is the message from ECL himself. Number one, he asked me to come and thank you, his colleagues, for being here and addressing your people. <laughs> Secondly, he said to me, I should come and tell the Zambian people that Uka is here to stay. <laughs> he gave me very clear instructions to come and say that he, on behalf of the Patriotic Front Party, wants to say that PF is totally committed to the growth of UCA. Viva UCA! Viva! Viva UCA! Viva! Viva! He also asked me to call upon the leadership of the Patriotic Front. Go out there, meet the people, strengthen the structures of the Patriotic Front. 
and all other partners of the of, of the of the UCA, you also go out there and strengthen the structures of your political parties. Yes. Because the strength of UCA only borrows from the strength of the individual political parties. We gave instructions to members of the Patriotic Front to reorganize the party and strengthen the structures. But it would be folly for any member of the Patriotic Front to go and pick a member of Citizens First. Or to go and pick a member of ULP to come into PF. Because then you are fishing from the same fish pond. You are not growing the numbers. You are not growing the numbers. If you kill FDD by getting all its members into PF, then what is the alliance? Instead, go out there and encourage people. If you don't like to be a member of PF, go and join FDD. Don't go and fi fish from FDD to bring them into PF or vice versa. No, don't do that. That is the message that I want to make clear because ECO instructed me, go and pass this message and let it be heard, especially by members of the Patriotic Front. If UCA is to survive, all its alliance partners must survive. <laughs> and finally, remember, that what is ahead of you is not an easy task. It was easy to inherit what the PF did. Very easy. To inherit what UPND will have left by 2026. Colleagues, if you think it's going to be an easy task, can you answer how we are going to possibly redeem the more than 400 civil servants who have been put on hold for no good explanation, for no good reason. Those Zambians who have been fired for no good reason, how will we redeem them? It is easy to destroy, but very difficult to build. When we say save Zambia, it is not for you and me. No. If you look at these people who are leading the political parties, they are in the afternoons of their lives. <laughs> what is it that I'm yet to earn except God's favor and glory? I have nothing more to lose. I'm approaching the end. But if your children and their children after them do not worry you, then you have no heart. Then you're not worth being referred to as a human being. Because God gave us the ability to procreate so that his word can continue to live. Now, if you're going to leave your children in squalor, you're going to leave your children in a country where they own nothing, you shall have to recompense them. It is for those children that we say to you, Uka, save Zambia. I want to thank you most sincerely for joining us. It is very sad that this is the fourth time that our notification to Grafeo Musamba for public rallies has been denied. Now, I would like to also join those who have given notice to Musamba. Your time is coming. Your time to answer questions is coming. The destruction of the democracy and multi-party democracy that Zambians fought for so dearly 
shall not go unquestioned. And next, today, Savoy and Jackson have been arrested. Last year, a number of us were threatened. Next, all of us must be ready. If we don't rise now in 2024, I can assure you, you will not rise in 2025. Time is now. Rise, rise, and save Zambia. Thank you very much.